Hey guys, uh, happy Thursday. So it is Thursday already, April the 8th. Um, so I just wanted to check in and a couple things remind you to don't forget to post your initial thread uh, by the end of the day today. Uh, uh, this week you're doing some research. You're looking at change of venue requests. And so we have you researching a case of your choice uh, using some resources through the Shapiro Library. Um, and in the assignment guidelines, and in the discussion board post that I posted for module six, I give you an example as to how it should look. Okay, so how your response uh, should look. So if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and take a look, quick look at my post and that might give you some ideas to what we're looking for uh, this week uh, on that. Uh, now, change of venue request ties nicely into uh, our final project because one of the critical elements that you already addressed previously under uh, judicial systems was determined venue and one of the questions at the end of that was let me get it here was what are the implications of venue uh, and we're talking about implications of venue in general terms um, so this is going to be under judicial systems and it's going to be under item number E. E is in Edward. So uh, you can go back and take a look at that. But again, uh, we're talking about general implications of venue. So we've already talked about uh, state court structure and state geography and how sometimes courts aren't geographically located for everyone to access them easily. I also posted a news article about uh, LA County and their homeless courts and the issues associated with that. So hope you had a chance to read that article because that would serve as a good example that you could cite in your paper. Um, so that's this change of venue would be is a good example of general implications of venue. In other words, the, the, the fact that one might request a change of venue due to the uh, excessive negative pretrial publicity that one believes has somehow negatively influenced uh, a potential jury pool. Okay, and then for your short paper this week, you are working on mandatory minimum sentences and sentencing guidelines. So remember, these are two separate concepts. Sentencing guidelines and mandatory minimums uh, sentencing are two separate concepts, all right? Um, what's interesting today is mandatory minimums are coming under scrutiny. Uh, legislators over the past several decades have passed enhancements use a gun and go to prison. So that's an enhancement. So that might automatically get you an extra two, three, four, five years in prison if you use a gun during the commission of a robbery in some locations. Um, using a gun during a drug transaction might get you more jail time. These are what we call enhancements or mandatory minimum sentences. In other words, you have to serve a certain amount of time before you're even eligible to be considered for release on parole or uh, whatever mechanism your, your state uh, tends to use. OK, so that's what we're doing this week. So you're you're you need to get an understanding of sentencing guidelines and mandatory minimum sentencing. Now, sentencing guidelines are going to be part of your final paper. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that here in, in just a second. OK, so that's how these things are all coming together now. So next week is uh, module seven and module seven is where you're going to have to work on your final project. So remember, your final project, you've already done two-thirds of the work in milestone one and milestone two all right those are going to be part of your final project so you don't need to reinvent the wheel what you need to do is is go back and look at my feedback to you my comments and suggestions and incorporate those massage it clean it up and then um, use your the final um, assignment guidelines and the grading rubric as your outline and then place those in Alpha, uh, uh, in in order based on the um, outline uh, and the grading rubric so you can see how everything's supposed to follow each other okay so that would be the best thing so this is what you're looking at here this is what I want you to look at here the assignment guidelines and grading rubric and so that tells you let me get straight for you guys there we go that tells you what the sequence of uh, your information should be it makes it easier for you and most certainly makes it easier for me as I read through this because uh, the final project has about 18 critical elements, right? So you've already done most of those. You've probably done about 12. The last six or so uh, have not been part of milestone one or milestone two. So you need to really make sure that you include those. And please make sure you take a look at 
um, my uh, announcements for this week, all right, uh, and for next week, module six and module seven, because in, in each of those modules, I talk about some of these critical elements that uh, have not been part of milestone one and milestone two, okay? So those are gonna include such things as sentencing guidelines, uh, functionality of sentencing guidelines, in other words, what's the purpose of sentencing guidelines, the litigation process, and this refers to the litigating process, the litigating process in, in criminal cases. In other words, what are the steps that take place in the criminal uh, adjudication process or the litigation process, right? So uh, I, I referred um, textbook information for you in the announcements. Uh, I've also offered you a chart to look at. And then I also discussed it in my announcements for module six and module seven. So make sure you take a look at those. Statute of limitations is another one. I discussed that in my short module lecture in module seven. Uh, discovery delay, I discussed that in the short module lecture in module seven, uh, because you need to understand a little bit about federal discovery rules for criminal cases, not civil cases, criminal cases. So in my short module lecture, I discuss uh, the specific federal rule that applies to discovery in criminal cases. Uh, it's very short, just take a look at that, and then that'll help you figure out whether or not the prosecutor's request is um, above board or not, okay? So, again, uh, don't forget that there are at least uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other critical elements that you have not already addressed, all right? So you're gonna have module one, module two, and then you're gonna be uh, filling in the rest of your final paper with these uh, other critical elements. So again, Use uh, the final paper assignment guidelines and grading rubric as your outline. That'll help you make sure you address each of those. Uh, also, don't forget to take a look at my uh, feedback to you on your assignments. Make the necessary adjustments, tweak it a little bit, uh, and then follow it. Uh, follow the uh, the outline based on the assignment guidelines and grading rubric, and I think uh, that'll uh, help you out tremendously. All right. Don't wait to the last minute to start working on uh, the final project, OK, because you're going to have to do some work. All right. Uh, so uh, I think that's it. That's all I have on my notes. Um, again, I appreciate everyone's hard work. Uh, if you have any outstanding assignments that I've contacted you about, please make sure you try to get those to me uh, so that I can make sure you get some credit for those. Uh, assignments. All right. Uh, that having been said, if you have any questions or concerns about the final project or any of the assignments, any of the grades you receive, uh, whatever, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I'll be happy to talk about it. Okay. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, have a great weekend. And um, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks. Bye.